Tim. Yes. What's your topic? So I'm going to throw it back to you, Greg. It's a topic from Patreon. That's right. Chris. Mm. How do you pronounce his last name? Zavalos? Zevalos. Zevalos. Chris Zevalos mm-hmm. supported us over on Patreon.com slash kind of funny. Get his topic right in the air. And here it is. <laughs> How would the kind of funny team deal with family loss or finding out a person you know has been diagnosed with a possibly terminal disease? Obviously, everyone focuses on the sick person, but it can really take a toll on the people around them. I recently heard Brian Altano's mom was recently diagnosed, so I looked to Brian to see how he handled the situation in a very public manner due to his job. It must have been difficult, but he also seemed supported by a great community. My story is on the GoFund... I'm sorry. My story is on GoFundMe.com slash Gloria... I'm sorry. Zelos? Is that how you said it? Zevalos, I would say. Z-E-V-A-L-L-O-S. My mom actually passed away since the last time we spoke. It's destroyed our family because of the nature of my family. Basically, everyone is at each other's throats. I'm trying to cover all the costs to reel everyone in. It's been difficult. Uh, This is from Chris, of course. He had reached out originally with this topic because he wanted to surprise his family, his mom, to go to the GoFundMe site to support her treatment. She has since passed away, so the GoFundMe site has turned into a memorial for his mom to pay for bills, her service, and everything else. So, of course, we encourage you, if you can, to go throw a few bucks that way. But this is one of those things I think about all the time because I'm getting older, which then I'll stop and be like, oh, fuck, my parents are getting older. Mm -hmm. What is going to happen when inevitably something bad happens? You know what I mean? And I don't mean like shark attack i mean they, they get and i don't mean cancer I, you know what i mean anything i had cancer but you know when one of those events happens for them what is my reaction i assume it's that i'm gonna have to i'm gonna tear up stakes and go out there for as long as it takes but what if it is like my cancer was right where it's like a six months process i don't know how i'm gonna deal with that now in terms of how i deal with it emotionally i would deal with it very much the same way brian's doing with his mom where he's throwing himself into his work into the comedy but into ign being public about it right because that's all we know how to do that's who mm-hmm. we are Sorry, you threw me off when you said your, your parents might die of a shark attack. In Lake Superior, wherever the fuck it is. <laughs> Lake from. Michigan. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, what a way to go. They go. Mom was just on a cruise. You're telling me a fucking shark couldn't have jumped out of the water. Big old Jamie Kennedy onto on the cruise? deck. Yeah, the carnival, whatever the fuck it was. And then just started thrashing around, gets her. She's over there trying to enjoy a shrimp it's cocktail. Possible. getting the. Where did, where did big old Jamie Kennedy go? Uh, down south to Mexico. Oh, Mexico. I, I think. I don't know. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's Lots right. Lots of sharks there. Mexico. I, Mexico. I think about this subject a lot, actually, um, because uh, same reason, right? My parents are almost in their seventies, and they're thank God, knock on wood, both happy and healthy. Um, but every once in a while, my mom will tell me something, and I'll, like the, it was like six months ago. She was like, "Well, you know, I went in for this this surgery, mm-hmm. and it was a pretty major surgery." I don't want to get into details. To you know, I want to respect her. Head her. transplant. It was a head transplant. It was actually a head and a foot transplant at the same time. They were there. They put her under. They're like, we got to do them both. Um, we went in to check on your foot. There's a problem with your head. We, we, <laughs> we did them both. Uh, but no, she just kind of casually was like, oh, well, you know, I just got out of the hospital. I, I did this thing. It's not a big deal. And I was like, what? Wait, you had surgery? Like, like they put you under and you had surgery? She's like, yeah, but it wasn't a big deal. I was like, but you got to fucking tell me these things. Like, yeah. Where have we gone wrong in our life that you don't feel like that? I at least I should at least get a call and the guilt trip for not being there. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Like I expect mm-hmm. that, right? Catholic guilt for sure. Yeah, the Catholic guilt. Like, where the fuck have I have I been? Have I put up that big of a fortress between us um, that you don't feel that you can do that to me anymore? Because it still works. Um, and I actually have communicated that to her, thankfully, and she has heard it and now calls me more often, which I like. To guilt had, you? Yeah, good. It's great. Well, some she either calls me to guilt me. I mean, this is this is our relationship, and this you know it's 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 endearing because she either calls me to guilt me or she either calls me to talk shit about my brother. Both interesting on their in their own right, but I prefer the one where we talk shit about my brother. Of course, it's just super fun. But she, because I, I know she does the same thing to me with Matt. Of course. So when, when she called Matt, like thing for the your sons. brother did this thing and didn't invite us or whatever, and I was like, eh, whatever. Um, but I thankfully have not had to had to deal with that. But I've I've watched my dad go through um, losing my grandmother Scarpino. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't know my grandfather; he died when I was one. But my grandma Scarpino went, and she was the matriarch of that side of the family, um, and in some way, kind of was the crazy glue that sure. held it all together emphasis on the crazy yeah so when she was not that 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 sort of cornerstone anymore um or keystone rather uh it all just everyone started being becoming an interesting little kind of monstrous version of themselves with my dad with my dad and his parents not my dad specifically but with his uh his relatives and not not nothing bad but it was normal it was a this person's gone it all this stuff is happening now how do we react to this and they reacted kind of negatively and it kind of put a little bit of a dent in the relationship with all the families i think we've since um then been able to rectify it but it's it's hard because no. there's a lot of real shit that goes into that too. and that's the big thing i mean when i think about like my parents getting older or whatever i think about being a kid and watching them deal with their parents mm-hmm. you know what i mean who 
never they, no one ever moved out of the DuPage County you know what I mean mm-hmm. like when they were all right there everybody's a, what a 10 minute at max car ride away Grandma yeah. Miller of course living down the street we've already covered this if I'm lying back kills uh, girls no raccoon she didn't kill it just trapped it Fuck but it I mean up. like she was right down there you know what I mean then eventually moved downtown and then like mm-hmm. my mom's folks lived downtown Glen Ellen as well and stuff like it was everyone was right there and that's when you start getting to the point of like I remember those days of you know uh, having the ambulance have to come to Poppy and Grandma's, which were you yeah. know um, uh, yeah. Grandma and Grandpa Kennedy and all the stuff, but it, like that people were able to be there like that. You know what I mean? And yeah. mine's always like, "Fuck, when's it gonna happen? When is something bad gonna happen?" Where I'm like at PAX or whatever, and we're doing some stupid fucking panel, and I come off and I'm like, "Gotta go." Every, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, see you guys. I I don't know when I'll be back or what's happening. Bye. Yeah, it's never convenient. I mean, when, when my grandmother passed away, she'd been ill for a while. She um had had some. I think she had a couple bypass surgeries, like a, more than one should have, I think, in their life. She didn't take the, the best care of herself toward the end of life. The doctor would tell her to stop eating so much salt and go for a walk every once in a while. She basically told him to go fuck himself. Um, I like her. Oh, yeah. She was like, I don't care. Like straight up like, oh, whatever. And, but the doctor's like, you're going to die. She's like, eh. I, you are too, doctor. She died fucking eating pizza and like. No, she did. Oh, really? No, I mean like she. <laughs> <laughs> not, not literally. No, but to the day she died, she never once. Never mind, she didn't really go. That. Yeah, <laughs> be hilarious. That he, she actually ended up um, fighting with the pizza guy. He killed her. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. While she's eating, he's like, "Pay me!" And then it's just <laughs> escalated. Fist the cuffs. He he lost a leg. It was a whole ring roll. Um, but no, but like, but but that was that was really. I mean, I remember getting a call saying like your grandma's in the hospital, and I was like, oh, this is. Not it's gonna be fine, yeah. and then but it was like the tone of my dad's voice was like this is this is it, and I'm like this is weird. This is the first time I've confronted this because even when I was young, my mom lost her mother, um, but I was I was very young, and I just remember my mom crying a lot. Yeah, um, but it wasn't. I didn't really. I was too young to really sure. register what was happening. But this was the first time I'd see another thing that would stay with me forever, which was my my when my dad's mom died, my grandmother died. Um, she was in the hospital, came out of the hospital, and I had a call like, a couple weeks later that she'd passed, and I was like, oh, that it was really sad. But then I remember seeing it hit my dad, mm-hmm. and I've never seen my dad cry before, yep. and that fucking tore me apart. Yeah. And him, and then seeing her um, her brothers, because it, she has a couple brothers that were still alive, and they're well into their 80s at this point, crying as well, and facing that, and you seeing them face that, their their own mortality and understanding that they like outlived their sister who was the younger version. You know, there's a lot of emotion that goes yeah. into that. And so it becomes very, very, very real for you. And then somehow through these beautiful brains of ours, we just decided to, we just kind of shut it out because we have to, right? You can't, you can't think about your death every day of your life. Or can um, I? Oh, you can trust me. <laughs> now, uh, th- th- I've said this in the past and I hate talking about it, but like, you know, if you were to count the 20 people in my family closest to me or whatever, like, so, like, my siblings, my parents, my uncles and aunts, like, my cousins, like, everyone's still alive. And, like, the last time we lost someone that was, like, super close to me was my grandmother in 2004 and before that my grandfather in 1996. Um, and when my grandfather died, it was, like, a total polar shift for my family because he was the patriarch of the family, like, very Italian family, very Italian man. And, uh, you know, then his wife died. She kind of like went, you know, um, these, this is my mom's parents. Like she kind of just lost her will to live and just fucking went on for eight years and just went senile and had Alzheimer's and had no idea who anyone was just totally gave up. So it was like, that was like really sad. But like, I know that eventually like someone's number is going to get pulled. And I hate to say that, like, it could be mine. It could be like anyone's, but I'm like, but I like, I look and I'm like, fuck. This is what I was saying in the last thing where I'm like, I got to be better. Like, I don't know, like, when this is going to happen and who mm-hmm. it's going to happen to. And I'm going to and, and all I know is that I'm going to be full of regret. And the last time it almost happened was my uncle, Mike, who I love to death. I, he's the guy I play fantasy football with. We're always texting back and forth. He's a he's a great man. He's a really great man. Um, he uh, he had a heart attack when I was in college and had, I think, quadruple bypass. Mm. And I remember going home to Long Island with my mom from Northeastern Jesus, to see him or whatever. By, what yeah. the fuck? And um. And I remember just, he was like stapled up. Like they like, and I, I remember just hysterically crying. And I remember feeling bad because my cousin Jamie, that's his only child, like was being way more composed than I was. And I was like, this is fucked up. Like, I'm not like, I don't think about this enough to like, to understand that this mortality issue is going to like come and nip us in the butt mm-hmm. at some point. Um, and so I'm sad about it. Like my parents are getting older and the one thing I know, and I, you know, and I'm, not, I'm not trying to tempt fate, but it's just like this is wood too. It, oh, okay. It's, it's like I'm just trying to help It's like it's yeah. like I assure you that is not if, <laughs> if something oak. if something happened to my mom or my dad, yeah, I would point. be finished for a while. Yeah, like would, absolutely I'd be out for a while fucking too. finished. Especially, I love my mom and dad equally, but especially my mom. 
because like of just the nature of a mother son relationship like sure. i'd be out of commission yeah, i'd be I gone be... i'd be out of here for a few months probably like gone and like the the i just i've I said this to aaron and, and, and it, i guess it's morbid but like i really want to go before like my parents do <laughs> Like oh, I know I that that's like, I, like, I, like, I really like I and my siblings like if I, I can live if they can live into their like because of modern medicine all the they live to 100 and that gets me into my 60s cool like I'll I'll gladly not fucking bear witness to that fucking tragedy of like losing one of my parents because it's so terrible I saw what it did to my mom mm -hmm. you know and and um and it's 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 a sad thing my uncle Mike's um uh father just passed away actually as well and then that was it's it's, it's a it's a heartbreaking kind of thing um and so I try to remain cognizant of 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 that because it's kind of it's kind of a scary situation. And I, I always I think I, saw, I talked about when we were talking about 9-11 at some point. Like I remember when my dad's best friend died in 9-11, um, Tommy, um, he was a fireman. And I remember his daughter, um, she he was buried. Um, he was the last one to get buried because they never of uh, the 343 because he never found they never found his body. Um, so this was in 2002. And uh, I remember his daughter was my age and we had known each other like kind of in a cursory way but whatever and i remember her hysterically crying in the church or whatever and i was like depending on the situation in the day or whatever because everyone in the firehouse died that day that was on duty like that could have just been me yeah and so i realized at that point with my father specifically that i dodged many a bullet that i never even thought of as a kid because yeah. he was gone and he could have died any given day you know, as anyone could, but I mean, he was putting himself, well, in, he danger, himself in danger, yeah, like over and over again. And so I've just kind of counted my blessings that everyone's healthy and everyone's good. But the same thing, my mom does the same thing to me. And I feel bad because my mom who listens to the show, hi, mom, she, like she busts my balls a Big lot because pain. I don't I don't talk to her enough. And I really don't. And she's like, I just want to hear from you. And I just like want to talk to you. And I'm like, I just don't know what you like, we said about this. Like, I, I just feel like I'm fucking boring. Like, I don't have anything to say. No, but at the same time, it's like that. I would maybe like it comes to time when I'm never able to talk to her again, you know, like, and, and, that was, and that's that like my thing, man. It's like, it's like almost bringing tears to my eyes. It's like heartbreaking. It's like, Jesus, like what's wrong with me? You know, like, I like dude, like two weeks ago, I no. straight up called my parents and I was like, you guys need to call me more straight up. And they were like, yeah, well you told us not to call. I was like, well, fuck me from, from like two years ago. <laughs> like I know I was busy and I was an asshole back then, but you guys need to call me once a week. Like you're my parents. You need to call me once a week done. And they have. Yeah. And it's good. But to your point earlier, like, I don't really have that much to say that they can really relate to me on because I they know we run a business. They know we're successful. They know we're happy, which is all that really matters. When I start getting into the intricacies of, like, what it means to, like, be a part of, you know, the Rooster the family or any of that stuff, they, they don't know. They don't know what the hell I'm talking about. But ultimately, they just kind of want to hear what's happening in your life, and they want to tell you what's happening in their life, and that's it. And, it, like, it's a 15-minute conversation that I feel so much better about having every week now. Mm. Um, unless my dad starts talking about taxes, in which case I want to fucking shoot myself in the head. Because it's an hour and a half long tax code conversation where I'm like, I put the phone down, bake a cake, watch some porn. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> Good lord. Yeah, I think I think it's just, it's, it's so how would I prepare for it? I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think you ever prepare for that. I just no. know, I just know what I would be like when it, like, when I lose someone that's close to me. I've just, I've. God, it's like so I hate saying it, but you have to verbalize it. Like it's just I've been pretty lucky. Yeah. You know, so, so far. And but we are all getting older and this luck will not last. You know, so yeah. That's the scary thing about it, is just like, man, like I, I kind of just want to go before any of these fucking people. And it's so selfish. It's like such a it's like actually the most profoundly selfish thing you can possibly feel is to be like, I so want to avoid this that I want to die before any of you. Oh yeah, wait till you get <laughs> you married. Know, like, wait till you get married. And that, that sentiment is like tenfold. Like we, I kid my wife about it, but I'm deadly serious. I'm like, I'm going way before you, way before you. Like I don't even want, I just want, if there's any hint that you might be sick, I might just be like, just put one, Jesus. have Kevin come up and put a 22. She's like, I just had the flu. Like, well, can't handle it. Can't handle it. Cause I, I just, I, I, don't, I don't think flu. I do well with that. And I also don't know. The only, thing, the only thing that would break my heart about my parents is that they're still together. And so I don't know which one would be worse if one went, if my dad went first or my mom, like mm. it would just be bad yeah, yeah, yeah. cause my dad. I don't think is capable of, I mean, he's, he can, he's obviously a very competent and smart human being, but like, I just don't know that he'll take care of himself very well. And my mom, I think as much shit as she talks about my dad <laughs> really loves him. Of course. And like they have to, like, she just, that's, it's her partner, you know? Yeah. And like, there's after it's, it's weird now having that perspective when you're 36 and going like, well, if God forbid my wife one day was. To say to me, you know what, this is just not working. I don't want to do this anymore. It would be, it would crush me, but I would, I would be able to bounce back.
Right. But when you're 70, yeah. what the fuck are you going to do? What are you going to do? You're going to go to the discotheque, your local, your local club, <laughs> discotheque. you know, you're like going to find something from your, it doesn't exist anymore. There's no, there's, you can't do that. Like this is your partner. This is this person's been with you your entire life. Yeah, exactly. And this is, and, and, and when they go, there's no getting that back. That's, that takes a piece of you with them and you gotta, you just have to go after it eventually. That's what happened to my grandma. They were married 52 years and it was just like, it was over. She was done. Like uh, she was done. It was, yeah. incre- it was incredible to watch as a kid. Like I was like, this is my grandfather died. She was normal for like two weeks and then it was over. And I never had a conversation with my grandma for eight years after that. And that, that like, she had, had no idea who I even was. That was, the, I, when I, I was think like, what back, the fuck happened? You were fine. When I think of my yeah. mom's folks dying, that's what I think of. Like her mom, her mom went first. My grandmother went first or whatever. And I remember on the way out, my grandfather, he was already in a wheelchair or whatever. He had, uh, you know, he was dealing with lung cancer and emphysema and all that stuff. And I remember him grabbing the casket and leaning in to kiss her goodbye and said, he'd see her soon. And like, that was like, you know, it was like him giving, I mean, he's, you know, he was stuck around for a long time. Yeah. Ate some potpourri. It's another story for another time. But like, I think you know, he told that story. I love that story. It's a good story. It's, that's like one of the, like our family stories or whatever. <laughs> Those chips tasted terrible. What chips? The chips you put on the coffee. This is my, him after he moved in with my aunt. My aunt's like, I didn't caught chips. She means, you mean the potpourri? <laughs> what? You ate potpourri? <laughs> Grandpa, why'd you eat the whole bowl? <laughs> um, although I will say this, my, my, my wife's grandmother, who was, uh, her husband's passed away a long time ago, has a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. So there is, there is. You can well, that's kind the thing. of continue I mean, that. Like a companion. And she's happy. Yeah, I mean, they're like, I don't know what they do. I don't really want details Do you on want it. to know? No, I don't. I'll I find don't out. Want that. But apparently that's a thing, by the way. Yeah, nursing homes. Nursing homes like, they're like the Olympic the uh, campus. Like people just ravaging each other. Nice. Like, what do you got to lose? <laughs> what do you care? Why don't they have anything to lose at the Olympic campus? It's like the Olympic <laughs> well, campus. The they Olympic have nothing campus. to lose. Well, those are two separate statements. It was okay. like the Olympic campus. Period. They have nothing to lose. Period. Um, Why do you? Is it just because everybody's so hot? You think at the Olympics are all like athletes? Apparently, that's rage. what they say. Yeah. That's what I've heard. That's that's the rumor in the campfires that everyone's so incredibly fit and good looking, and they're yeah. all hopped up on like a, an, on endorphins and steroids, and probably well, we don't know steroids. We don't want to start rumors, but yes, steroids. Um, Michael Phelps already cleans up, or did. Oh, I guarantee he did. Phelps, Phelps taking bong rips. The, I, there, man, I've fun. never been more disappointed in a human being than when that photo surfaced and Michael Phelps was like, apologize for it. I would have just come up and be like, yeah, that was me smoking weed and I've won like 18 Olympic gold medals. How you doing? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> you think I care about these endorsements? I'm a millionaire. But, yeah. Yeah. You just show the picture of him with those 80 medals around his chest and then just another picture that's just his middle yeah, finger. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was actually shitty. I don't know. Is that is it? Illegal to smoke weed when you're on in uh, the Olympics. I think you can test positive for it. Yeah, I don't oh, know, if, but I know, in, fact, in most sports they don't test you for weed though, right? No, they do in football. Yeah, and people get does, yeah. people get suspended for like four games and then a what whole about baseball? year. The baseball, I don't baseball, know. Baseball, you can smoke on the mound. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> well, there's that whole famous. There's that whole famous thing. It was the Pittsburgh Pirates, right? Where the guy threw a whole, in a complete game shutout or something high on. Uh, he was on acid. There's a there's a thirty That's for thirty. Awesome. There's a thirty for thirty about it. Oh wow, I, uh, I think. Yeah, what but kinda, like what the I, I'll I'll look into it or like, awesome. it was like one of the great pitching it was like one of the great pitching performances of all time, but he was like totally fucked. Like the entire just time. in the zone, man, just focused. Was mm-hmm. able to get in touch with that. That's crazy. I'll look into that. This is like the one topic that I I like I have so much trouble even speaking on. Yeah. Like it's yeah. so close to home in such a way that like it there's nothing that gets me more emotional than this in a bad way. Like it's it's weird because I, I feel like I handle things well overall. And um when there's problems, either I can solve them or I have people like Kevin to solve them. Mm-hmm. This is like the one thing that's been, an, it's the issue of my life is my parents' health and my brother's well being. And it's like dealing with that over the 26 years I've been alive has always been the one thing that I have absolutely no control over. And it's very difficult when I can't just do something or not do something or put myself in a position that will help. And it's, I, I feel like, it's the same advice you give someone that's just going through any type of hard time where it's just, just do the best you can, you know, be you. And mm-hmm. like, that's how you handle it. It's just be the best you that you can be. Yeah. And cause I, I, you need to realize what you can't control and you need to just, you can't control life. You control, you can re control how you react to life, you know? Mm. And that's the, that's something I learned a long time mm. ago. And it's just been like something happens and you just need to allow yourself to feel the emotions that you feel. But like, to remember that you got to keep moving forward because you can't let it destroy you because it will. Like if you mm-hmm. let that, if you let these things get to you, they're going to get to you more than anything. Like this, this sounds stupid, but it's not a joke at all. Like in Lion King, when Mufasa dies, like that moment with Simba, like, oh my God, I can't even handle it right now. Like really 
that resonates with me in such a fucking way where I'm just like, damn, like Simba lost his dad, you know, Mm -hmm. he's not coming back. That moment, every time I see it, it reminds me of my brother and just knowing that one day that's going to happen. And that scares me, you know, but it's like, I can't let that affect anything. I got to just like, keep being me, keep doing good. My mom's the same way. Like (laughs) my mom is old. My mom is not healthy. My mom is, you know, and uh, all I can do is make sure the kind of funny live is as good as it possibly can because she's going to be at this one. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, don't feel bad. But uh, just do you. Skate better. Skate better. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Game Over Greggy Show. Each and every week, four, sometimes five best friends gather on this table. Each bring a random topic discussion for your amusement. If you like that, head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunny and toss us a few bucks to get exclusive access to each and every episode, get cool perks, and even see Nick naked. Nick, we gotta take photos of you naked and put them on the Patreon. Page. I like how said goodies funny. earlier. Yeah, that was that was good. I like that there's goodies on Patreon. Okay, I'll add them in there for you. Good. We've been putting up these behind the scenes things for the animated series. I got more for you. Oh, good. That's what I like to see. All right, cool. If you have no money to give us, no big deal. Head over to youtube.com slash kind of funny where we post the entire show topic by topic, day by day, until the entire thing goes up the following Friday. It's one big video and MP3. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you.